How's it going everyone? This is my black and welcome back to my channel where today I want to see if spending an extra 100 plus dollars on a Z270 platform alongside an unlocked i3 is really the way to go when compared to a much cheaper, although aging, FX8 series alternative. But before we get started, check out my Twitter account and also consider subscribing for more awesome content. Now, beam me up Scotty! I recently started browsing the web looking for 7350k performance details and the first thing that jumped in my face is the frankly huge price of the new unlocked i3. To top this off, if you get this and want to overclock it, well duh, you need a Z270 or Z170 board which also comes at a premium. Let's assume you're not going to get a top Z270 board and will opt for one of the cheaper ones out there. Add in 16GB of decent 2400MHz DDR4 RAM and you're looking at a bill of $380 already. On the flip side though, if you were to build an FX8 series based system with an AMD 970 chipset for example and 16GB of decent 1866MHz DDR3 RAM, then you can get away as cheap as $260 or potentially even lower since parts like these are frequently on sale seeing as they're not the bleeding edge for quite some time. Both platforms will require a decent air cooler like a Hyper 212 EVO to cool the CPU so we are even here. While PSU requirements are not the same you can get a quality 500W PSU for cheap these days and this is the minimum I'd recommend right now anyway. You are however in the possession of an extra 110 to 120 dollars to do with as you please if you go the AMD route. But is this a wise choice? Well to find out I took my 7700K and I disabled two cores essentially making it the unlocked i3. But with double DL3 cache, that's 8 megabytes instead of 4 megabytes on the real thing. Now I don't expect this to skew results in any meaningful way, so for all intents and purposes, consider this the unlock 7350K. I also overclocked both processors to 4.5 GHz not in an effort to run clock for clock as this is mostly irrelevant considering that we are talking about two different architectures and platforms but because I feel that 4.5 GHz is the frequency that both the i3 as well as any FX8 series CPU will easily hit. Plus, not everybody wants or aims to reach huge overclocks in the 4.8 plus GHz area. Obviously, running higher clocks will offer better performance on both platforms. I also paired the 7350K with 2400MHz memory running CL13 and the FX system with 1866MHz CL9. But what about the GPU? Hmm, to give a proper workout for these CPUs I pair both platforms with an overclocked GTX 1070 running 2100 MHz core clock and 8500 MHz memory. Chances of squeezing in such a GPU on a limited budget is much more likely if you go the AMD route and have those extra dollars in your pocket. But how will this fare in the real world? I tested in a grand total of 12 games ranging from the extremely CPU demanding to GPU limited. As always I also included 5% low frames instead of flat out minimums and these represent the average of the lowest 5% of frames, this being a much better and relevant metric. I wanted to start with BF1 not because of its popularity but because this is the biggest delta between these processors that I've seen throughout my tests. I only tested in DX11 and this was chosen over DX12 which does perform faster on the FX CPU simply because DX12 is still a stuttery show in BF1 and I do not recommend it even now. You are playing a competitive multiplayer game after all, not a single player one so absence of stutter is very very important. GTA 5 also reveals such a similar difference but you will discover throughout my tests that the performance difference between the two CPUs is not nearly as high as these two games show it to be. Generally when switching to highly threaded games the FX CPUs will keep up and even sometimes beat the unlocked i3. This happens for example in Watch Dogs 2 where I saw and felt better performance from the FX chip. We also have an extreme case with the old but power hungry Crisis 3 which ran significantly better on the FX than on the i3. Don't just look at the averages and lows I'm talking about frame times and frame pacing which was horrible on the Intel. Very stuttery to the point I reinstalled the game two times and tried different GPU drivers to make sure that it's not something else amiss. But the trend throughout these tests is that the i3 is being faster in some games on par in others and slightly below in the last tier of titles. Frankly the performance difference between these two CPUs is all over the place and this is normal since we've gone so broad on the tests and on the platforms, DX11, DX12, Vulkan etc. I see it like this, if your budget is set in stone then the FX is an option to go with. If you have wiggle room then you can spend those extra dollars for the extra performance of the unlocked i3, although I can't understand why you'd not just add a tiny bit more and get an i5 or a used unlocked i5 better yet. I'll leave you to enjoy these and at the end we'll take a look at the absolute performance of these CPUs.
Since the i3 is the more expensive option, I put everything in reference to it. We cannot remove CPU demanding games from these tests simply because no benchmark will ever dictate what your gaming preferences are. So removing something like BF1 or GTA 5 just to see how the average performance difference changes is not a real life situation. However, at the end of the day, you'll still have those $110 to $120 in your pocket to do with as you please. And again, if you're on a set budget, not allowing for powerful GPUs, the i3 system will suffer. You might end up only squeezing in a 3GB GTX 1060 or an RX 470 on it, for example, while you might even be able to get a powerful GTX 1070 on the AMD system. In such a situation, you'll most definitely see better performance on the FX CPU. And although an aging platform, you can still get good features on the AMD 970 motherboards like M.2 or even U.2, USB 3.1 with Type-C connectors, quality sound implementations, etc. A plus of the Z270 chipset is the higher count of PCIe lanes available for Crossfire and SLI, although this is not really relevant with these CPUs, and the open upgrade path. And of course the 4K streaming, which is limited to a Kaby Lake system at the moment. Not factored in here, however, is the fact that AMD frequently runs promotions on motherboards and FX CPUs, and if you are at the right time like I was when I got these parts, you might end up getting two free quality games which you can either keep or sell quickly for a fast buck. So in the end it's up to you of course, but if you're wanting to do a build with either of these two CPUs I'd wait for the third option, and that is a lower price Zen CPU when they come out, although this might just very well put you back in the $380 category making the old FX platform still a viable choice. And this is why I feel that AM3 Plus is not going to disappear after Zen release and will actually just linger on on the lower budget PC gaming scene with gaming becoming a highly parallel and multi-threaded affair in the last years. This aging platform might very well grow young again on the entry level segment with prices dropping right now. And remember I want to see your comments, questions and suggestions down below. Thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing and see you next time everybody, bye bye.